Hello, welcome back. Last time I played solitaire and then had some struggles with control flow for some reason. But now that I've struggled, hopefully I'll struggle less next time. What's this? Whoa, okay, that's right. That opens the manual. I, f I forgot. I already have it open. Don't need a second copy, right? Yeah, that's there. Apparently, there's some sort of like built-in PDF index in here, and this is where I find the table of contents. So now I know. All right, concept mail. Uh, laid up signs, that's done. Uh, bring out the Baron. The Baron von Schnapps is in the house, y'all. Okay, I was out drinking last night and met someone from the company that owns this brand. There's a drinking game that they're promoting that's hella fun and off the rails. I made a deal to supply them with little personal scorekeepers that they can give away at their events. Wait, what's the game? What counts as a point? What would be a foul? Surely not individual drinks. I don't remember the actual rules, <laughs> but we're building a machine for it anyway. <laughs> oh man. So I haven't gotten to interact with David very much. We've seen plenty of Carl. He's kind of all over the place. Very friendly. Plenty of Dia. Uh, decent amount of Joe now. Uh, David, and there was at least one or two other co-workers I met. Who else is here? Leader. Alright, yeah. Wang Yong Hong. Don't really know him at all. That's all I've ever heard from him. Wu Lili. Haven't done anything with her. Okay. Bring out the Baron. Sure. Don't remember the rules, but we're designing a circuit for it anyway. Okay, sure. So big LCD counter thing. Point and foul are simple inputs connected to buttons. Display is an XBus display output corresponding to a numeric LCD screen. The counter should keep track of a count starting at zero and ensure that the display is always showing the current value. When point is pushed, the count should be incremented by one. When foul is pushed, the count should be decremented by two, but not below zero. Okay. That sounds really easy. Foul, foul, point, 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 foul. Okay, so foul is minus two, point is plus one, and that's it. Okay, you're gonna be... Super easy. Uh, those can both oh, be inputs. I don't imagine I'll need... Okay, it feels wrong to have this be P1. So that's P0, that's P1. Oh, problem is... Oh, Xbus. Okay, that's nice. Xbus corresponds to LCD screen. Yeah, this is going all over the place, but that's fine. Okay, so here's where I'm writing my code. So, I need to... Alright, so simple inputs always have... Well, no, hold on. Xbus output. So it, right, it blocks... You're going to be blocked pulling for your input from me. So I don't think I have to move a zero immediately. Uh, you start at zero, so that's your value, of course. Um, all I want to do is, for each tick, pull P0. Ooh. This sample data does not have any instances of both point and foul being pressed at the same time. I'm going to put a, uh, a behavior in here that if both are pressed simultaneously, point will override foul. Uh, I could do it the other way around. Uh, but yeah, that will be a behavior of this. It is unspecified, so I will make an implementation to find a behavior for that. So all I really want is uh, tech p0 uh, 100. Well, actually, I guess if both are pressed at the same time, then we can add one and subtract two, right? Huh. Sure. Okay. Uh, tech p0 100 plus uh, add one. Tech p one one hundred sub two and then I need to clamp uh, how do I clamp 
TLT, probably. So TLT zero, what? TLT zero ack plus um, sub, no, uh, move zero ack, sleep one, right? Doesn't work. Oh, I know why. Uh, do I? I'm not sure I do. So like, this part works, right? Sub two. Yeah, so ack is, wait, minus four. TLT, LT. TLT zero ack. Oh, my upper ends are the wrong way around. It's TLT ack zero. Of course it is. Well, yeah, I uh, I did, did it right over there, but you know, whatever. Sub two, ack is minus two, that's what I want. TLT ack zero, enabled, move zero ack, great. Oh, um, I'm also missing <laughs> something a little important. Move ack, x zero, there we go. Zoom, 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 still zero. P zero 100, add one. All right, great. Look at that X must go. <laughs> All right, I did it. See, that one was nice and simple and easy. I could imagine some sort of wizardry that could be pulled off to get the uh, power usage down. Yep, it exists. I don't know what, but I could imagine that that's a thing. Everyone else did the exact same thing as me, except a few exceptional optimizers and a couple of, well, these are probably also the same people who optimized here. Probably. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, I could probably involve more boards somehow. Yeah, I'd imagine that. All right, great. A nice easy one. Hey, there she is. If you can't remember the rules of the game you were playing, how sure are you that you actually made the deal? <laughs> because they sent us a case with a variety of flavors. It's very tasty stuff, come try some. It's already too late for me, but you can still save yourselves. Heed my warning to not drink of the Baron von Schnapps. Bye then. See you in the next life. <laughs> All right, so Carl went and partied with Joe and had a bad time, apparently. At least afterwards. Shenzhen Days, saying stuff better. Tilly88, words.creation. Do you even work for me, or is this just, like, spam I'm getting? Hey, y'all, 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 y'all. Sometimes it's tough to represent how a word really sounds in text, huh? <laughs> Take, for a totally random example, Shenzhen. How do you say it? What's that ZH doing in there? Can you just ignore the H? Spoiler warning, you can't. ZH is its own sound in Chinese. We don't have time to go into the, all the fun foibles of Pinyin, the official romanization system for Mandarin Chinese, so let me give you a little shortcut. Say Shenzhen. You know, like you're talking to your best friend, Jen. And, well, then you're probably closer than you were before. How's that for confidence? I'll do one more. The Chinese yuan is the currency here. Though that word is one syllable. I hear people go yuan or yuan and, well, wow, that's kind of painful. I'm not sure how to fix this quickly. How about trying to say yuan really, really fast? You're still making two sounds instead of one, but maybe it's closer. Maybe. By the way, we use Y with two lines as a currency symbol, which you might have associated with Japanese yen, of course. It is the same character, isn't it? And it is. It's also CNY, Chinese yuan. Look, don't you dare give me side eye if you come from a place that uses the dollar sign because do you mean Hong Kong dollars? Australian dollars? Canadian dollars? Yeah, we could probably all agree that dollars yuan means hella cash. <laughs> okay. Anyway, now you're wandering around Shenzhen buying things in Chinese yuan like that super pro that you are. Pronunciation can be tough, but it's worth putting in the effort. Ain't it, y'all? This is nice. I like this. I already knew all this stuff, but uh, I appreciate the refresher anyway. Rubbish audio thing. Oh boy, we're working with audio. Harmonic maximization engine. 
<laughs> so a contact comes in to build a piece of audio kit. Sounds fun, right? I've always liked audio. Me too. The client promises that their little box will deliver crisp highs and booming lows all in perfect balance. Then I see their advert happens to include the much vaunted algorithm that powers this thing. Ah, go on, take a look yourself. I should mention I put a copy of said advert on your desk. Just look in the pile of papers marked supplemental data. Oh, okay. Since that seemed most appropriate. I should also mention that we still have to do this as sad as it is. Work's work and all, even when you have to help a dodgy American company market rubbish like this as premium kit for audiophiles. <laughs> all right. So before I even open this thing up, let's go find the advertisement for the whatever. Uh, sure. Let me have another copy of this. Supplemental data. Incredible sound at a breakthrough price. Sounds impossible? Nah, sounds like harmonic maximization. At the Sunnyvale Institute for Audio Engineering, we have done decades of advanced audio research, but even we know that a truly breakthrough audio device only comes around once in a generation. So it was with no small amount of trepidation when our scientists in the lab introduced us to something they'd been working on for the last few years. Would this be just another piece of audio gear destined to gather dust, dust on the shelves of your local electronics store? Our minds changed once we took a listen. Everything sounded more alive, more present, more real to us than anything we'd heard before. Whereas before, the harmonies would float through the air listlessly towards our ears. With this technology, the sound was heightened, improved, maximized. The propeller heads and back won't like that we're showing it to you, but go on. Have a peek at the proprietary harmonic maximization formula. Audio out equals audio in minus 50 times 4 plus 50. Really? That's your formula. Yes, but what does all that mumbo-jumbo mean, you might ask. It may be Greek to you and me, but don't worry. What it means for us is crisp highs and booming lows, all in perfect balance. <laughs> this is not going to be good for your audio data. I can already tell. Let's see. So minus 50 times 4 plus 50. I mean, depends on the signedness of your audio signal. If we assume it's unsigned, no, I mean, it would be signed, of course. So audio in minus 50 times 4 plus 50. I mean, that's going to boost your base, of course. Like, you lower it, you expand the range, then you raise it back up again, so you'll get... It's amplification, yes, but it's like amplification that works more heavily in the bass than the treble. Yeah, that's that's all it is. Sure. Uh, as for all that math, well, we'll just have to trust that our world-class acoustics engineers know what to do with it. And it's a good thing we do, because they've taken that little algorithm and miniaturized it into an ingenious little device you can plug into any audio source. So we're building a cheap knockoff of this... Love it. Sunnyvale Institute for Audio Engineering. Change the way you hear from ear to ear. <laughs> Alright then. Audio in is a simple input connected to an audio source. Audio out is a simple output connected to an audio receiver. Maximize is a simple input connected to a switch. Okay. The signal from audio in should be copied to audio out, applying the harmonic maximization algorithm when the maximize switch is on. Look in the supplemental data section of the manual to find an advertisement featuring the harmonic maximization algorithm. It's funny how this functions almost like... You get a game like 40 years ago, and it'll come with a paper manual that has some instructions like this uh, as a sort of primitive form of DRM. Copy protection, they called it back then. <laughs> uh... But here, the manual is included as a PDF, but still, the information is not in-game. You have to use the supplemental material. So I would interpret this more as just being, like, something ensuring... Can I go forward with the back button? No. Uh, just, like, absolutely super ensuring that you are using the manual, because it's a crucial part of the game here. Like, before, maybe you could have gotten by with just guessing parts of the language based on the example you saw in... Uh, in the very first thing, but no, here, crucial solution information is in the manual. Is it, though? You could also deduce it from the expected outputs. Anyway, input minus 50 times 4 plus 50. Sure. Uh, 
I don't think these instructions will fit in an MC4000, but I'll try before I upgrade it. So maximize is simple input. Sure, you do that. I do then go here. And that's a simple output. No, I'm gonna need one of those just for the number of outputs. Yeah, three simples. So P0 is here. Hang on, no, this only has two Ps. Okay, I can't do this with one then. So I absolutely do need to involve two of these. All right, um, so the maximize one will X bus over to here to determine whether the maximize is happening or not. This will take the audio in and move it to audio out and apply the algorithm to it. Again, I don't think it will fit in here, but I might be wrong. Okay, so this means tech x0 1 uh, actually you don't do that yet um, move audio oh <laughs> you don't call it audio in move p0 ack uh, tech x0 1 um, plus sub 50 plus mul 4 plus add 50 uh, Move ACK P1. Oh, is it just that simple? Seems like it. Tech P0 100. Mm -hmm. uh, is this how I want to do this? This is basically just a pass through, changing this simple input to an X bus input. Uh, so really, why don't I make it literally that? Tech X0 100, and this can just move P0 X1, right? 48. Oh, you're not sleeping, whoopsie. Okay, great, great. And when it maximizes, great, everything's perfect. Okay. Wow, this is a far cry from the problems I was having the other day. <laughs> it's like they front loaded one of the harder puzzles. Or maybe one that just easily traps me into wanting to optimize. All right, everybody else did it the way I did, except a few who didn't. <laughs> That's fine, that was the obvious way. Cool. Holy crap, this thing is awesome! I hooked one of these babies up to my stereo at home and it blew the speakers clear off! Does the job, no question. Amazing! <laughs> this guy. Self-driving car stuck in a loop? You may be entitled to a settlement. <laughs> Dear consumer, if you bought a self-driving car in the past five years and your car was involved in a rogue loop, RL, incident, you may be entitled to compensation under a settlement to a class action lawsuit filed in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of California. <laughs> sure, this is relevant to me in China. A rogue loop is defined by the court as a state where a self-driving car appears to disregard humans and continues to drive around, refueling itself when necessary, and ignores orders to stop. <laughs> If you believe your self-driving car has experienced this condition in the last five years, please contact us for more information on how to submit a claim. Law Offices of Steed and Holman. Attention, Rogue Loop Claims. Infrared Sensor! Oh boy, sure, well, I guess I'm one more leveling. Maybe it'll be fine. All. I'm in the process of setting up closer tie-ups with a, with top glo- What do I know about Wulili? Can I get, like, any- I'm looking for some information about her personality so I know how to read her. Okay, it just seems cordial and to the point, pretty much. But on the rubbish audio thing... No, the... The Baron Schnapps. How are you sure that you actually made the deal? Okay, sure. Uh, 
I'm in the process of setting up closer tie-ups with top global firms, and I'm working to secure higher profile work for our company. The first result of these efforts is a contract to create an infrared sensor. This allows us to participate in the booming market for passive monitoring systems to detect illegal activities. Illegal carbon emissions, illegal growing operations, illegal immigration. If it's against the law and it generates heat, we'll detect it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, really just if it generates heat, we'll detect it. But you gotta throw in that part about the law there. <laughs> Alright then. Oh man, I got a special part here. Also, there's a lot of stuff that I could put here. Wait. MC4000, MC4000X, MC4000X. MC4000X. No, I want the hardware reference. Don't have one. Wait, maybe I do. Parts data sheet. MC4000. MC6000. As a result of customer feedback, an Xbus only variant will be made, made available uh, with the MC4000X part number. Okay. I kept reading this over and over, and somehow I could not see the difference between MC4000 and MC4000X. Now I see it. It's right there. It's very obvious. MC4000, 4000X. So this is this but Xbus only. Uh, this does not correspond to any of these, I imagine. So it's like a bespoke part, and this too, probably. That's just part of this puzzle. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> this could be a problem. This looks complicated. Time is a simple input connected to a DT2415 clock providing the current time. That's... Which one? No. Oh. Cool, okay. Whoa, okay. Undo, undo, undo. Go back to initial state. Sensor is a simple input connected to an infrared sensor. Alarm is a simple output connected to a silent alarm, okay? When the current time equals the on time, the device should be armed. When the current time equals the off time, the device should be disarmed. Like this is not interactive. Whenever the device is armed and the sensor reads at or above a value of 20, the alarm output should be active. The on and off times are set by the operator using dials that can be read as XBUS inputs and use numerical values compatible with the DT2415. DT2415 is not something I have here. Is it on my list of parts? DX300. Read only memory. I mean, this is all this stuff. All right, let's try. What was it? DT2415. Denver Timekeeping 2415. Here we go. The section I am in is somewhere. Okay, so yeah, it is that thing. It, it had to be at this point. Emits a simple I.O. signal that corresponds to the number of 15 minute increments since midnight. Includes a built-in backup battery so that the time is kept even when power is not available. So that's this. Uh, RTC. I don't remember my circuit diagrams well enough to know what this is a symbol for. Is that capacitor, maybe? I don't know. Uh, no, I don't think it is. Diode? Double diode? I No, it's neither of those. <laughs> it's something else. Uh, NC time index. NC not connected. So this is the wire that actually goes somewhere. Right, I can see in the diagram here. Great. But there's like two more ports, just don't use those. Uh, so zero, one, two, three. Okay, so 15 minute increments, got it. The Denver Timekeeping story. When Denver Timekeeping founders Chad and Becca set up their small batch chip fab in the mountain town of Denver, Colorado, there were many who were dubious, to say the least. You can't manufacture in America anymore, they said. It's too expensive and hasn't all that expertise left the country anyhow. They should have hired me. But Chad and Becca persistently stuck to their vision of inexpensive, reliable, and American-made timekeeping chips manufactured the old way. And after many trials and tribulations, they were proud to announce that Denver Timekeeping DT2415 
24 hours, 15 minutes. Got it. Made in the cool air with the pure water of the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> Can I drink it? This real-time clock includes a backup battery that ensures the time is kept even when the power is not. A must-have for ruggedized devices. We hope you enjoy this chip. And you're, if you're ever in Denver, drop us a line. Chad and Becca love to show customers around the fab. Okay. So simple I.O. with an index of 15 minute increments into the day. Zero to 95. Got it. 93, 38. Are these both, do they correspond to the index of numerical values compatible with DT2415? Yes. Okay. Verification going to look like that. Time simple input. Of course. All right. Sensor simple input. So I can move this around, but this is just a, a through hole on the circuit board. So these, these don't move, but these do. So that's possibly relevant to something. Uh, alarm simple output. Yeah. Okay. So instructions one more time. When the current time equals the on time, the device should be armed. When the current time equals the off time, the device should be disarmed. So at the boundaries, when it is the on time, it is armed. When it is the off time, it is disarmed. Between on and off, it's armed. Uh, so right, greater than or equal to on, less than off. Will it ever give me off time greater than on time? Because clocks loop around, that's valid input. It doesn't say that it would. So let's for now build this assuming that it won't. I'm going to build shoddy electronics that can only be on during the day. You can't have it on overnight. If it goes past midnight, then it's not going to work. Okay. So, um, I mean, that's completely in character for this game. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm role-playing as a uh, long tongue electronics uh, employee here. Uh, or I could make it work for that, but I, I would get no benefit out of it. <laughs> Man, this is like some subtle storytelling here. Because, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I know exactly how I would write this program to test for off time being able to be greater than on time so that it goes past midnight. It's just it would take more instructions and probably more, uh, more of these. So I'm not going to do it. Okay, so uh, simple input, simple input, simple input. Got three of those. That's already a problem. So one controller. I mean, it's not a problem, but it's something to work around. What? Oh, that's Xbus. Oh, it is? Wait, no, okay. Then maybe I can do it with just one. No, because I have already... Uh, I do have three simple pins... Sensor, this thing, and alarm. And 2x bus. So I need like the opposite of this for that. Okay, so uh, what's the plan? <laughs> what's a bridge? So I'm one more leveling real hard here. Oh, check it out. That's what a bridge is. I get it. So I can wire around the stuff, of course. Okay, cool. So 3D wiring is available. Uh, so I know that this thing can flip around. Can you? Doesn't look like it. Can you? Doesn't look like it. Are both of these outputs... Hold on, no, this is the DT2415. So what is this? Red is Xbus inputs. I'm going to guess these just both output the same thing in both directions. Okay, so. Oh, hang on a second. No, 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 no. Okay, so now that I actually look at this, this is configured for the on time to be more than the off time. So, like, this turns on at the 93rd 15 minute increment of the day and turns off at the 38th. So it's going to be on overnight, so I do have to handle that case. Uh, and I assume further verification will have it the other way around, potentially. Okay, that's totally fine. 
I know a super easy hack since I know this is in the range of zero to, what is it, 95? Zero to 95. I can just add 100 to this. Well, add 100 if it's less. Can I? No, it's not that simple. Okay, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, what I'm worried about first is my inputs and outputs. Since I have three simple thingies, I do need at least two modules. I know that for sure. What I have to decide is what their jobs are going to be. I mean, intuitively, my sense is that one is going to be the switchable pass-through for the sensor. So basically, like, sensor will go in here, output will go out here, and some X bus will tell it, okay, so if some X bus is telling it, then I do definitely need one of these for talking to that. Some X bus will tell it whether to be on or not. So this will just be like, um, tech X1 100, uh, um, yeah, sure, don't, just pretend it is then, here, uh, so plus is, uh, um, output time, sensor, simple input, whoa, sensor is, oh, that's right, sensor is, a. Uh, it's at or above value of 20, um, Everything can be within the conditional here. Uh, is there a test not equal? Well, not exactly, but I can just do this. Well, there's there's no difference here. Okay, so when it's on, ah, when it's on, uh, ooh, that's interesting. That's fine. TGT P020. Nineteen. Greater than nineteen, twenty or above. Uh, move one hundred P1. Move zero P1, sleep one. Okay, so that's all you would have to do. So then you just need to have all the smarts in you or maybe work with someone who does. Uh, now, I guess I do need to read these every thingy. Do I? I probably don't. Let's just read these at power on time because it says, set by operator using dials that can be read as Xbox inputs, use numeric values. So I'm gonna build this such that uh, if you want to reset the time, you have to power it off and back on because I'm only gonna read these values once, probably. Uh, or, now hold on. No, I don't have to store them at all if they're Xbus connected. Sure, that'll work. Uh, you know what worked better? This. Sure. If they're Xbus connected, I think that's more pleasing. Uh, if they're Xbus connected, I can just read them at any time. So that's on time, that's off time. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, interesting. So the Xbus can basically be another, almost another storage register in a way. Okay, now this does need to communicate with its friend every tick because you will be blocking on that X bus waiting for your input. So every tick you have to send a zero or a hundred here. Just using the zero, 100 um, convention since that's what the game does. I could do zero, one, but I'll stick with that convention. So this is not currently connected. This is a simple IO, which I guess will go into P1. Okay, will it now? All right, so we also got some spatial challenges here. Oops, whoa, okay, calm down. 
Okay, I got that into P1, I think. I don't believe I am uh, judged on the cost for that. Bridge costs nothing, wire costs nothing. Okay, great. So this thing's output, which is an integer. It is a simple output, right? Yes. And simple is the one I can just read at any time. Okay, yeah, so I said the wrong thing about Xbus earlier. Don't worry about it. Okay, so, um, move uh, P1 ACK or DAT, doesn't matter. I, th I only need the one register, so I'll use the more easily operable on one. Uh, so I read the state of the clock. If it is, uh, let's see. Wait, why am I putting that in ACK? It's simple I.O., so I don't need to move it anywhere at all. Okay, so. This has to have two modes for whether on time is greater or off time is greater. So TGT X0 X1. So if X0 is greater than X1, then that means uh, some things. That means it's inverted. And that's the, cur the initial configuration here. All right, so inverted configuration means if you are greater than 93 or less than 38, either way, uh, let's see, I think actually I can do some arithmetic here to simplify this. I uh, also probably don't need to, but I might be able to. I think if I subtract the... If I subtract the on time... I don't know, there are a lot of routes to the same thing. I am I just need to choose one. So what's a simple one? Right. So it's not power efficient to check this every time but I, it is flexible, so I'm, I'm making up for the flaw I was saying where you'd have to power this off to adjust the time. Um, this doesn't have inputs for those. They're just whatever they are. Maybe they're always those values. Okay, anyway. Uh, so if on time is greater... Let's do it the other way first. If it's the simple case where uh, on time is less than off time. And again, I don't know if this code will ever execute during verification, but when this product is in customer's hands, it totally would. <laughs> so I want to handle this case. Uh, even if it'll hurt my score. <laughs> this is just... It's interesting. Anyway, so... In the simple case, if P1 is greater than or equal to on time, and it is less than off time, hmm. I'm going to have to jump here. Well, I don't need another jump. Okay, so jump normal. Uh, inv. Normal. So norm and inv. I need my horizontal space. Norm is... Um, so TGT... I need TGE. If P1 
is greater than x0. See, I, I want this, but it doesn't exist. I could read x0 and subtract one from it. I could probably also just like put a t eq. All right, so to get greater than or equal, I'm gonna tech p0 x0 minus tgt, uh, not p0, p1. P1 x0. So this tests if they are equal. So if it's at the on time, uh, then, right, if it's at the on time by reading P1, P1 equals x0, the on time, then you do a thing. If it's not, then you check if it's greater. So if that's greater, and then I also need to say, okay, so this is weird. I have multiple conditions here and I have this weird mode switch conditional thing where there's only one uh, TLT P1 X1. And that is LT, not LE. So if that's still true, yes, okay, it's just three conditions. Equal to on time, greater than on time, less than off time. If all three of those are true, and, but only test greater than if it's not equal, yeah, so either way, you're either going to do this additional test if it's not equal, or this. Uh, if those are all true, then I want to move 100 to x3. Else I want to move 0 x3. Okay, and if it's inverted. So writing for what's actually on screen here. I'm going to do this differently. Not very differently. It's actually very similar. Actually, no, I can do the same logic, but reverse my output. Watch. Shoot, I need to jump. That's fine. Uh, Okay, so, wow, that fit very neatly. Um, jump norm, in tech P1 X0. So if it is between, okay, let's see. So if X0 is greater than X1, so on time is greater than off time. Then I also reverse my X pins. Okay, so if you're greater than or equal to off time, P1 X1, and you're less than on time, then you are off. Uh, that's P1 X0. Okay, I think, oops. So I think that works. So, if on is greater than off, and you're between these two values, then you're off if you're outside, you're on. If on is less than off, like if you have this on in the middle of the day, not crossing over midnight, then if you're between those two values, including the, the lower one, then you're on, otherwise you're off. Okay, I think that covers all cases. All right, bunch of toggles. It is currently off, because it is not time. You move zero to P1. This is really power inefficient, isn't it? Okay, so we're past the on time now. 93, 93, yes. And value 35. 
Okay, it did it. Okay, it did it. All right, we passed midnight. So now we're in the morning. Still on. Working great. I got my logic right. Perfect. Okay, good. And yes, those did flip around. Nice. Okay, I had to handle that. I did it right. <laughs> uh, what's my power inefficiency? I remember there was one. And yeah, I am a little above expected. Lines of code's a bit high. So I have two sections in my MC6000 that looked very, uh, very similar to each other. I'm sure there was some way to do that differently that would result in less power usage. It looks like while I said I was going to optimize for power usage, it looks like I'm actually maybe going for production cost. And someone's done it with a lot less. Someone did it with one MC6000? How? You don't have enough simple I.O. for that. Well, that's baffling, but okay. All right, well, I did it. All right, I'm happy with that. Just letting you know, know that your design for the infrared sensor component was well received by our partners and is set to be integrated into a number of products currently under development by various defense and security firms. Obviously, our performance here opens the door to more jobs of this nature, so thank you for contributing to Long Tongue's future. Lili Wu. Hang on. We're becoming a defense supplier. <laughs> We're an everything supplier. Whatever kind of junk you want, junky electronics, etc., we'll do it. <laughs> this is cool. Oh man, I'm so glad today went much better than last time. I'm feeling comfortable with this language now. Still got some, like, creativity under pressure, design decisions to make on the fly, but, uh, that went nicely. All right, cool stuff. I'll see you next time for these things.